welcome. Thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen today. My name is Amy Height and I'm a holistic nutritionist. Today we are going to learn how to make the perfect veggie burger. No more buying those ones from the store that come out of the box, they're frozen, they're packaged, they taste like cardboard. We are going to use some real awesome whole ingredients and make our own at home. These are a great thing you, uh, to make advance in a batch. Uh, you, can, you can freeze them, they will taste the same. Or you can use them as different uh, ingredients in other meals throughout the week. This mixture in particular, really, really awesome for meatballs, or not meatballs, if you want to throw them into a sauce. So let's jump in. Let's look at what we're working with. Um, really, really awesome base of whole food ingredients. And when we think about making a veggie burger, there are a couple of things that we want to make sure we're including. So we want to think about what is the flavor that we're after. The one we're working with today is a little bit Mediterranean inspired. Um, we want to think about heft. You know, if you think about a traditional beef burger, um, it has that, that weightiness and that density to it. So we want to think about what's going to give us some, some nice density and heft. Texture, you know, that kind of interesting chewiness, and also freshness and acidity. So we're going to work in some lemon and some fresh herbs to help give that extra sort of bounce of flavor. Okay, so the, uh, the first step in our glorious veggie burger town today we have almonds so these are already pre-chopped what i did before we got here uh, was drop a whole bunch of almonds into a food processor and just slightly chop them just so they're broken up a little bit that's going to give us that nice weight uh, in our burger so we're going to take those and we're going to drop them in the food processor as always we're going to drop some on the counter because that's how we roll in the kitchen it's a mess and it's great um, we are also going to throw in a can of chickpeas. These are kind of um, another sort of meaty, dense texture giving implement uh, for these burgers. They're also super high in protein, uh, really high in fiber, and they're delicious. Really, really awesome ingredient to use if you're uh, playing with a plant-based diet. So we're gonna toss in our whole can of chickpeas, which have already been drained and rinsed. Whoop, those go in there. Um, what I have here as well is a bulb of garlic. And you'll see in the recipe that it says you want to use um, a bulb of garlic that has been roasted. So what we've done here is just cut the top off, um, drizzled it with some olive oil and wrapped it in foil. Uh, this was baked for about 40 minutes at about 350 degrees. And what that does is uh, allow the oil to really seep into the garlic, soften it up a little bit, and uh, really bring out the flavor. It also means that it's going to blend better. So what we'll do is peel our good friend the garlic here. And you'll see that you can pull out each individual clove. Um, so we're going to take off the skin from the outside. Nice squishy little whoop, bulb of garlic. In there they go. So we're using half of this, this head of garlic today. Um, if you are a super garlic fan or um, are looking to repel any vampires, you can use the whole thing. Um, but I think for this recipe and this version right now, we're just gonna do half. So that works out to about eight little cloves of garlic. Delicious, super, super squishy, super flavorful. added benefit of this is that garlic is really awesome for digestion. So it really helps the body to break down what we eat um, and, you know, keep everything, keep everything moving well and absorbing happily. Okay, so we're going to toss those guys in there and set the remainder aside. And then we're also going to throw in uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. That's just going to allow everything to incorporate really well and blend nice and smoothly. So one tablespoon there. Two tablespoons there, and we're gonna set our oil off to the side. Okie doke. So we have everybody in here, and then we're gonna turn the food processor on, and we're gonna blend this until it's pretty much a smooth puree. So we want as few chunks as possible. Okie doke, that's looking pretty good in there. Get our lid off. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we can just take a look here and see that it's pretty, pretty well combined. It actually looks a lot like hummus. Surprisingly, not so much because this is such a chickpea heavy base. It actually is a little bit like a hummus. So we're gonna take this, transfer it over to our big old mixing bowl. Remember to take our blade out there. Okay, and then we're gonna set this just off to the side. 
All right. So then we're going to move on to our next sort of set of ingredients. And these are the ones that are really going to bring some yummy flavor and some uh, awesome freshness to these burgers. So we have our scallions, some beautiful green onions. We're going to toss those in there. Delightful. OK. Um, we have half a lemon. We've cut him in half. And we're just going to squeeze it. Super simple. Um, you do want to pull the seeds out um, in advance, just so you don't end up with any little surprise chewy bits in there. So we're going to squeeze all of the juice out of our half a lemon. Okay. Groovy. Cool. We have here some, there we are, um, Kalamata olives. So we're going to pull out about two tablespoons worth of those and chop them up just into, into wee little bits. So um, we could throw them in as, as whole olives if we wanted to, um, but uh, in the interest of spreading them out through multiple burgers, we're going to cut them into smaller pieces. Now olives are a really awesome addition to these, these burgers, not only for flavor, but also because they offer some really, really beautiful um, unsaturated fat. So when we have fat in a meal, it actually helps us to register more easily that we are full, that we're done. The brain has some really powerful receptors for fat, so it only takes a little bit for it to pick up and say, cool, we've had enough, we're done, we can, uh, we can move on from this meal. And plus, it's just yummy, and healthy fats are, healthy fats are good fats. So we're going to take those olives, and we're going to toss them in, throw them right into our bowl there. We also have uh, some artichoke hearts. Um, I do buy the canned ones. Um, if you can look for a brand that doesn't have BPA in the lining, all the better. Um, just do give them a nice rinse uh, before you use them. So we're going to use about a quarter of a cup of these uh, artichoke hearts today, which works out to about three or four of them, depending on how big they are. So we're going to go with four. We're going to chop these up as well into some nice little pieces. I'm a big fan of using foods, you know, incorporate the whole, the whole of the food. So not just using the outer leaves of an artichoke, but using the hearts as well. It means you get all of the really awesome nutritional benefits of, of the whole plant. And oddly enough, the body can better absorb um, all of the nutrition from a plant if we eat it in its whole form. It's kind of the same like with eggs. So if you eat an egg but only eat the white, um, your body actually will interpret that as something is missing. And we can actually walk away from that feeling more hungry or less nourished. Um, same thing with beets or carrots. If you're eating the beet or the carrot, it can also be really beneficial to eat the greens in the same meal. So something to try next time you're playing around in the kitchen. So we've thrown our um, our scallions, our artichoke hearts, and our olives in there. We also have some fresh herbs. So these guys here, we have mint, we have parsley, and we have basil. Uh, we're going to just give our basil a little chop up into itty bitty little pieces. We're going to toss them in there. We're going to toss in our parsley because we've already cut it up. Same thing with our mint, little little chop here. Okay, cool. Just throw these guys here. Um, we are also going to add in some vegan yogurt. So this brand here, uh, so delicious. They make several different flavors. What you want to look for is plain, unsweetened, ungarbageified. We don't want any additional sweeteners um, of any kind added in. One, it's going to taste weird, and two, we just don't need them. So a plain variety, um, either of something like an almond yogurt, a coconut yogurt, um, whatever your preference is, but two tablespoons there. And what this is going to do is really help everything kind of blend and bind. There we go. There's our yogurt. We covered that guy. And then this guy here. This is the, the uber base of our burgers. And this is two and a quarter cups of cooked quinoa. Again, at the beginning of the week, um, if you can sort of prep your ingredients and have them handy, a grain, a legume, really, really awesome to prep in advance, super easy. Um, and it means that you can throw together a recipe like this in a fraction of the time because this is already done. So two and a quarter cups of our cooked quinoa. We're going to throw them in there. OK. We're going to season with a little salt and a little pepper. You can do this to taste and you can always adjust afterwards if you, uh, if you want to give it a little taste and see how you feel. A um, little, little pinch of our sea salt friend. Awesome. Okay. And then we're going to mix. So we're going to thoroughly combine all of the ingredients in here until they form a really nice paste. 
what's awesome about this is because there is such a high protein content in the the beans and in the quinoa um, as well as in the almonds this is a really like hefty meal this is one of those ones where you know we don't have to worry that oh we're not having meat and we're not getting enough protein there is so much plant-based protein in here and also combined in a really complementary way that the body can really use what's in here um, in, in a really in a really lasting kind of way um, Plus, it's delicious, and let's be real, that's, that's kind of what we're all after, right? So we're gonna mix this guy up till it's all nice and combined. I'm noticing because my yogurt is a little on the chilled side, it's not, um, it's not combining quite as easily. So what we can actually do here, and luckily, I washed my hands like not five minutes ago, so uh, we're just gonna jump in, and what we'll do is just allow it to incorporate with our hands. I remember watching my mom make burgers when I was a kid, um, and they were definitely, they were beef based and they had eggs and breadcrumbs and stuff in them and I remember loving them. They were so yummy. But I remember watching her mix them with her hands and be like, oh my gosh, you're handling raw meat, that's so gross. Um, but what's great about this is there's no raw meat. It's just quinoa and beans and good healthy plant based stuff. So, you know, we get the whole same experience without feeling like we're missing out. Not bad, right? So we're going to do a little, little wipe off over here. And there you go. There is your base for your burgers. Pretty simple, right? So we're gonna heat up our stove here. We want kind of a medium high heat. And we're gonna add a little bit more of our olive oil just to kind of get that skillet nice and warm. You can kind of eyeball that. And as it heats up, you just wanna kind of spread it around a bit and allow it to really coat the pan. So if you're cooking up a batch of this and uh, you know, you mix it up and you don't want to cook it all at once, cool, no problem. You can put the raw batter in the freezer. You can cook it and then freeze it. Um, or you can use it for different things. I mean, we could, we could do meatballs right now. We could do these burgers. We could do um, little falafels and put them into a sandwich with some hummus. You know, you can, you can get creative. Again, lots of really great ingredients and like super versatile. So I'm going to wait for this little guy to heat up. You do want it to be, you know, to the point where your oil is just a little bit shiny and then you know it's hot enough to really get that nice crispy edge on the outside of your burgers. And what's awesome is these are totally kid friendly too. So even folks who you know you think might not be on board with eating a non-meat thing or a non-traditional burger, see how this goes. If you need to tell them there's meat in it to get them to try it, that's cool too. Everybody wins. So here we are warming up. So what we'll do is we're going to take our little burger friends and form them into some patties. Okay, you want about a third of an inch to half an inch thick. And drop them into your oil there. What's extra awesome is that we're not paying premium prices for a pre-packaged processed version of a burger. These are also not packed with um, like fake soy meat or anything like that. These are all real ingredients that just happen to be dressing up for the day as burgers. So kind of kind of fun way to use stuff that might otherwise be in your kitchen without feeling like you just have to eat a bowl of, you know, brown rice and beans all the time because we really can mix this stuff up and have it kind of taste fantastic. So there we go. We've got our burgers going in the pan. Um, we're going to do about four minutes on each side. Uh, you just you want to wait until they've crisped up a little bit and you can really see that they're they're cooking. Um, you can press them down. And there you go, there's dinner. That took what, six, seven minutes at most? Maybe a little bit of time at the beginning for some prep and to cut stuff up, but this is a super easy weeknight meal. You can make a big batch of it and have it handy. Really great portable lunches. And if you're feeling adventurous, maybe even good at breakfast time. Little, little sauteed kale, little veggie burger, start you off for your day. So thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, I, I really would encourage you to make these at home. Please send me a picture of you trying them or uh, send me any questions about the recipe. Um, and I uh, look forward to hearing about your kitchen adventures. Thank you so much again and uh, happy cooking.